I've had a crazy weekend. I don't really even have a lesson planned, but I'm going to try to take a page <laughs> out of Eckhart Tolle, who was a part of this event that I was lecturing at this weekend. And on the program, we all like we were all listed. So I mean, if some of you don't know, so I, I was asked to guest speak at Gate, which is called the Global Alliance for Transformation Entertainment. There were some amazing, amazing speakers there. Jim Carrey spoke. Tom Shadiak, who actually used to direct many Jim Carrey movies, like in the 90s and early 2000s, you remember, like, Liar Liar, and, and then he, he wrote and directed that movie, help me out here, it was on Oprah, all about, oh, come on, I people, am. I, I am. am, thank you, I love you, you get a free book, I'm just kidding, no, you guys, because Robin would kill me if I gave away free books, um, but, uh, but yes, he wrote I Am, and all about sort of his spiritual journey in Hollywood, and like, being a billionaire and you know anyway and I got to lecture as well um, but and, and anyway and, and so in the, in the program um, they list like kind of what the topic was and mine was on uh, the transformative aspect of performance but I actually changed it to the transformative aspect of being because that's really what it's about but uh, for Eckhart Tolle it said Discussion to be decided in the now. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. Amazing. So, yes, being surrounded by all these great teachers this weekend and these amazing uplifting messages, including the world's largest harp. I've never seen or heard anything quite that extraordinary, but I'll save that for another time. This, this woman had to wear, like, meat-cleaving gloves to play the instrument. It was kind of crazy. This idea of the now and presence, where creativity comes from, what does spirit mean, and how does that, how does that come forward, which is the governing principle in your life, whether you realize it or not. And for me, I also spoke in the afternoon, and I got my own ass kicked in the lessons of everything that I teach, which is all about throwing, throwing away preparation. It's never going to look the way you think it's going to look. You have got to be available to what's happening or you will get rolled over. And I'll just give you the very short version. The, the, the evening event was like with all those people that I talked about. And, but then there was also the day event, which was called a story conference. And so there were like people in the industry who were talking about telling, you know, uplifting or, or consciousness expanding story. Anyway, I thought it was going to be more of like a panel and a round table discussion, and I got there, and there were like a thousand people there, and I was like, what? And I was not prepared. I had nothing prepared. So, and Eric, you know, I'll know Eric, my sister was there with me, and he, we were sitting down, because I was like, this is going to be okay. And then he looked at me, and he's like, you do not look well. And I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? I was totally flipping out. No, it's, it's I mean, public speaking is batshit scary. And, and to not be prepared. Now, I was prepared for the night's lecture, but I didn't know the day lecture was going to be that intense. So anyway, the, the, what ended up coming out of it was the whole philosophy of what I teach. But, we, but, but it's actually the physics of the universe. <laughs> the physics of the universe are governing all of us. And what I'm trying to get us a little bit more aligned with is how do you work within their forces? Because they're doing you, and if you can just surrender more, they'll do you more greatly. And then if they do you more greatly, you will be and have all the things you want to be and have, creatively and in your own life. But we don't do that. We work in opposition to that force that wants to flow through us. So basically, I had to come up with what I was going to say in the moment with Eric in the car brainstorming what we were going to say. And I had the light bulb of, oh my God, that is creativity. Right now, what we are doing is what creativity looks like if you're, not, if, you're, if you're brave enough to embrace it and speak honestly about it. I had two options. And literally, these were two options that ran through my head. One was... I'm going to go find the organizer and I'm going to tell him I'm not feeling well and i got to go. <laughs> yeah, I really was. I was thinking so many scenarios in my head. How do I get out of here? I'm just going to get in my car and go. I was literally, this is what happens. Or I thought, okay, I mean, I didn't think this. This came to me as I started to work with that stuff, which the insight is that stuff, when you begin to take it out and share it and breathe, in it 
and work with it and see what it has to show you is the creative stuff we're all trying to access. It's unnameable, it's unknown, it's not definable, and it can't even really be taught in a, in a literal, linear way. But when you're being taught a process which makes you start to work with your stuff honestly, you can begin to see, oh, it takes form, it has structure. It is a, a grounding sort of foundation from which all things come. So I lectured about that, and I said the big insight is this is what creativity looks like, which was I had, I had written all these notes on a piece of paper kind of like this, and it was like, you know, chicken scratch, and I held it up and I said, creativity is not sweet and linear and perfect and all together and figured out and prepared and before the moment. It's all about working with it being crunchy and weird and messed up and scary and uh, unrecognizable and unknown. And when you begin, begin to work with that, it takes form. And you access really this quantum creativity. It was like a really sort of orgasmic experience for me to be in the middle of it. Uh, you're all looking at me like so silently, but I'm kind of reliving that thing. Let me just, does that all make sense? Yeah. And I think people were really kind of excited about you guys, I think, oh, you know me, the thing that I'm trying to teach is breaking myths about creativity. We have to break the myths. you got to break the myths of what you think creativity looks like because it's not what you've been taught, it's not what we're told, and it's not what the media portrays. Creation doesn't look like the end product that our society is fixated on. Creation is in the moment, rolling up your sleeves, trying things that fail, fall apart, work, don't work, creaky, sometimes are glorified, sometimes not. Sometimes you come back to the table and it falls apart again or you have an insight. It's all process. Failure, success, those are relative terms. I just want to end with this quote. It wasn't really what I was even going to lecture on. So I kind of did like, like Eckhart Tolle said. That was just all in the moment. But I did write this down. Ram Das, who's a really amazing spiritual teacher, had really influenced my work quite a bit. He says this, As long as you have certain desires about how it ought to be, you can't see how it is. That is deep. I will say it again. As long as you have certain desires about how it ought to be, you can't see how it is. And I'll just take that one step further. In relation to acting, you can't react or work off of or listen or be with what's coming at you because you're stuck here playing ideas, the memorization, the way you think it's supposed to be, the way it's supposed to sound, the way Dustin Hoffman did it, the way, get what I'm saying? Let that go. Work with what is. Okay, I'll do the other stuff next week. That's all I have to say. Oh, no, come on. Oh, it's been fun getting a lot of applause this weekend. I was like, yes, it's like really fun.